Hello everyone, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. My name is Serena, I'm a junior doctor, and I like making these videos in my spare time, so thanks for joining me. I've had a plant-based diet now for about four years, ever since my first veganuary four years ago, and I still remember how difficult it was in those first few days to weeks but I think I've gotten pretty good at it now. So I thought I would take you with me this week where I share breakfast, lunches, dinners, and snacks ideas and show you what an average week of eating plant-based looks like. So first things first, let's go shopping. I generally really enjoy grocery shopping, especially when I have the time to stroll down the aisles and take in all the colors and smells. But a lot of the time it does feel like a chore too. Coming to Australia and spending a lot more time shopping in farmers markets has made getting groceries a lot more exciting. Plus, I feel like I'm a lot more aware of what's in season and shop a bit more sustainably by buying local produce rather than stock flown in from the other side of the world, like I probably did a lot more of in the UK. We stopped to pick up some vegan pastries from one of my favourite bakeries because food shopping is hungry work. After a quick pit stop unloading groceries at home, we head to a nearby park to eat the rest of the pastries that we picked up. And so begins another week. Hello friends, good morning. Um, I've just come back from a run. I think I'm gonna have a smoothie for breakfast, which I often have for breakfast, especially on days off, especially after exercising. And then I'm going to make some lunch that I can take with me to the library. And yes, I'm not a student anymore, but I just can't let go. The flat is somewhere I come to relax and unwind. And I do like working here, but I don't feel as focused. So luckily there's a library literally across the road and it's so pretty in there. I'm gonna be heading there for most of the day. So I'm gonna make a smoothie now and then I'm gonna show you what I'm making for my quick lunch. So let's go with the smoothie. I'm gonna take this off as well. Don't need those in here. So all my smoothies follow a pretty simple formula. First we start with the bananas, which I need to go to my fruit bowl for, otherwise known as the banana graveyard. You can see this this guy's definitely on his way out, so he's gonna be selected today. Next, we have some mixture of berries. Sometimes I use fresh, sometimes frozen. This is generally cheaper and also makes the smoothies taste super nice and cold or feel cold. Can you taste cold? I don't know. I don't always do this, but most of the time, a scoop of vegan protein goes in as well, especially if I've been exercising. It is totally possible to get a good amount of protein on a vegan diet, as I'll hopefully show you this week, without supplements. But this is a good one that I found in Brisbane. So this is a salted caramel flavor. Next, a milk. So I use soy milk. Um, it has the most nutritionally similar profile to dairy milk. So it's got calcium, B12, and good level of protein as well. Most of this is fortified in almost most brands and most supermarkets now, so this is a good one to use. And last but not least, I try and chuck in some chia seeds into um, smoothies and oats and things because they are a really good source of omega-3, which otherwise you'd be getting in things like fish, which obviously I don't eat, so this is a really good alternative source. <laughs> I chuck in a cheeky bit of golden syrup for that extra bit of sugar hit and then as always make a little bit too much to fill a glass so there's an annoying amount left over. Mm. Oh, that's good. It is indeed very good, so much so that I try and finish up every last drop but oh wait, you weren't meant to see that, goodbye. After I get showered and dressed, I start preparing my lunch for the day which today is ban mi which is Basically a Vietnamese sandwich, I think is the best way to describe it. So far I've grated some carrots and I'm about to slice some cucumbers. And traditionally these are filled with some sort of meat, but obviously I won't be using any. Instead I'm using this tofu, which I really like because it's already flavored and already really firm. So there's basically no preparation you need to do. You just take it out the packet and chop. There's some chilies I'm chopping, which are optional obviously. And then that's all the fillings sorted. Next, uh, I've got this baguette, which I'm cutting into four equal pieces, and then just cutting them open to create a space to fill them. The sauces and garnishing in banh mi is what gives it its delicious flavor. So here I'm mixing vegan aioli with garlic chutney. You can use sriracha, I just didn't have any. You just wanna mix them to make that nice pinky sauce as I'm doing here. Next, I'm making this little soy sauce concoction. So obviously with soy sauce, I would usually just use garlic and ginger, but I had this crushed garlic and crushed ginger things in my fridge, so I used those instead. 
Then you're finally ready to start assembling. I spooned in the pinky sauce first. I think I would probably put a lot more in if I was making this again. Soak your cucumber in your soy sauce mixture and place those in. Then it's the tofu. Then it's mint leaves and coriander, and this bit is key for that amazing flavor. Adding in your grated carrot, sprinkling more of your soy sauce mixture, adding some lettuce, and listen to that crunch. All right, so it smells so good, I'm gonna have to try some now, before lunch. Mm. What's your favorite bit? All of it. So that's about four lunches taken care of. The last baguette kind of disintegrated, so it's turned into this salad with all the same ingredients and sauces and dips. So Vic's gonna have that now and these are for later. Next up, it's time for me to go to my snacks cupboard where I stock up on some sweet chili crisps, dark chocolate rice cakes, and of course my lunch. Remember when I said I couldn't really focus in my flat? It's definitely time to leave. Snack secured, I head down to the library and the banh mi for lunch goes down an absolute treat. Hello everyone, so we are heading to dinner now um, at one of our friends' houses. She actually cooks professionally, which is quite exciting. So her name is Shahini and she's smoking lime on Instagram. So I'll put the link down below. And she does these supper clubs, which she's done in Australia. today which um, are in my bag over here <laughs> some red potatoes so excited to see what it turns into I forgot to mention another contribution is a vegan brownie that I made with beetroot which I wasn't sure about but it smells delicious mm, yeah, you can't really see it I'll show it to you when we I told you when we get there being from Kolkata in India Shahini's cooking is inspired by Bengali household flavors this potato was cooked in mustard oil with nigella seeds cumin and turmeric just listen to that sizzle we were treated to an absolutely insane spread of not only the potatoes but a cauliflower dish as well as a dal Plus, this dish made entirely of vegetable peels, which were tossed in oil and some spices, which not only tasted unbelievably delicious, but such a good way to reduce food waste as well. Indian food at its finest, eaten around the table, and of course with your hands. Good morning, honeys, and welcome to the next day. I've just woken up, so excuse the appearance. Last night's dinner was just the best. I am so happy I'm getting to showcase some Indian food, South Asian food in this video, because it really is the most easiest and deliciousest form of vegan cooking that I love the most. I didn't realize how much food that I ate at home already that was part of, you know, staple Indian food was already vegan without having to change anything or substitute anything. It really is vegan food at its best and in its most original form. But bringing it back to breakfast today on a very cloudy morning in Brisbane, I'll just be having my normal boring breakfast I have every morning, which is some combination of oats. I actually am off today. I do work sometimes, but I finished nights on Sunday and I'm not back until Thursday night. So all these days um, are zero days and I'm off, which is another great thing for this video because I can spend more time filming and cooking tasty things. But the breakfast I'm having today, I have pretty much every day before work as well. So I think it's quite representative of my daily eating. Unsurprisingly, my oats recipe requires some oats some milk, I choose soy milk, and I usually add protein powder to get a bit more flavor. When I have enough, that is. And then finish with a smattering of chia seeds. And because I really like my oats being nice and chocolatey, sometimes achieved with chocolate protein powder, which I don't have right now. For now, I'm gonna put in a bit of chocolate. So this is some dark orange chocolate. So this wasn't like a vegan, labeled vegan chocolate, but most, or a lot of dark chocolates actually don't have milk in them. I've definitely noticed in Australia, a lot more of them do but definitely back home, a lot of dark chocolates didn't, so it was quite easy to find vegan chocolate, so I'm gonna put a square of that into my oats too. In goes the chocolate, and then in goes the oats into the microwave, and afterwards you're left with this gooey, chocolatey goodness. Mm -mm -mm. I add some fresh strawberries, just because I have some, but often use frozen as well, and there you have it, that is my totally unaesthetic but very delicious and filling breakfast which fuels me through my whole morning. Hello my friends, so I obviously ended up spending the whole morning um, 
doing my YouTube video stuff and literally had minutes to spare before I had to leave for my um, Pilates class, which I've just done. And oh my God, my first lesson, and I cannot recommend it enough. So good for people who want to do strength training, um, but don't want to, you know, go weightlifting in the gym or whatever. Um, anyway, now I've got 10 minutes before my um, nail appointment. Um, because this this hand needs help <laughs> so luckily the best thing about meal prepping is you've always got some food with you so I've got my banh mi that I made yesterday I made a spare one so I'm just gonna eat it on this bench now future Serena is very much regretting filming from this angle but on another note why do my arms look so dench I should do more Pilates one manicure and an afternoon of video editing later, I not only managed to catch golden hour in the flat, which is my favorite, I also managed to catch evidence of the only bit of help I offered in preparing dinner on this evening. This time, I was being transported to another part of India and being treated to the South Indian speciality of sambar. Sambar is a sort of lentil stew full of vegetables, as you can see, with prominent flavors coming from tamarind and curry leaves. It's traditionally eaten with dosa, which is this lentil rice pancake thing, which we bought a pre-made batter for because ain't nobody got time for that. And it actually really delivered on taste whilst being so easy to make. I was in absolute fairy lit food heaven. Good morning and welcome back to another morning with me. Being home this many mornings is very, very atypical. I think I mentioned I'm on night shifts, so I've got a few days off before I go back to nights, but really enjoying having mornings at home. It's actually so nice. I went to um, Pilates this morning, um, and it was called Hot Pilates, and I thought it was like, hot girl summer, hot, but it was like hot, hot. <laughs> like the room was boiling. It was only what can be described as a near-death experience. Breakfast wise, pretty, pretty boring stuff. I've just got um, my same breakfast as yesterday. So my oats with some chocolate mixed in there and some strawberries. I'm going to eat and get on with some admin this morning. By admin, I obviously mean scrolling on my phone mindlessly for a few hours before finally doing some actual work. Several hours later, I performed the masterful task of reheating up last night's food and helped myself to another round of sambar, this time with rice instead of dosa. Catching up on the Great British Bake Off is hungry work, but luckily I've got a leftover vegan pao chocolat in the fridge. Hello everyone, so it is dinner time now. I apologize for the awful lighting. I just can't find my camera lights, so having to use the lights in the flat, not ideal but I thought I would show you what I'm having for dinner today. So it's one of my favorite meals of the week. We have this pretty much every week and that is a soup. And if you've watched my favorites video, you'll know how much I love this blender, which is what we make our soups in. So I thought I'd show you how we actually use it. The general formula to make all the soups are to cut a sauteed, so to cut some onions, uh, garlics, and get some spices. Then you cut the vegetables that you want to use. So today I've cut some broccoli, got some frozen peas as well, and then we've got some other bits like spinach and mint leaves. So that's already cut behind me, um, and I'll just show you how to use it all with this blender. So first thing is to saute all the ingredients. So that's the onions and garlic and the spices, plus some butter. And then on here, there's actually a saute button. So I'll just press that. Uh... Cool. We also had some sweet potatoes left over from an old HelloFresh meal. So I've just chopped that up, seasoned it with salt, pepper, paprika and chili flakes. So I'm just gonna pop that in the oven now. Okay, the saute is done. So next bit is adding the vegetables and you can pretty much add anything at this point. Like I said, we've got broccoli and pea. I'm also going to add some uh, cannellini beans because they make the soup a little bit of a nicer consistency, a bit creamier. Also a good, another source of protein. There are a lot of vegan and vegetarian sources of protein, contrary to popular belief, but it's really, really important that you have a variety of those sources to make sure you're getting all your amino acids that you need. So for example, today I've had my soya milk with the oats. In the sambar I had for lunch, there was the lentils. They're all quite varied different sources to make sure that I'm getting all the proteins that I need. Something else I try and add as much as I can when I remember is spinach. I mentioned in my 
my last video it's really important to be getting your iron sources as well when you're eating a vegan diet all right so that's looking lovely and green and delicious now it's time to add some liquid i've got two cups of vegetable stock which i've just dissolved in some hot water so i'm going to pour that in now and i've actually totally forgotten to season it i should have done that with the sauteing stage so i'm going to add just a little bit of salt and pepper for now and then when it's cooked we'll season it more to taste Okay, that's done. So that timer is set for 30 minutes now. In that time, it's going to be blending and heating simultaneously. I've got time... Rude. I've got time now to clear everything up, wait for the sweet potato fries to be baked as well, and then it'll all be ready. 30 minutes and a little bit of vegan aioli later, I've got a delicious hearty soup and some crispy sweet potato fries ready for a yummy dinner. The next morning I get ready for a yoga class which apparently involves spilling water all over my kitchen countertop but eventually I do make it out the house. For some reason I have this tub of avocado spread at the back of my fridge so I dig it out to make the humble avocado on toast. With some salt, pepper and chili flakes sprinkled on top this is honestly one of the best breakfasts there is. I also find this stir fried mushroom thing left in the fridge from god knows when but it smells okay and what doesn't kill you makes you stronger right? Hello everyone and welcome back to my kitchen. It is so unusual for me to be in here this much during the week but I am going back to work finally today so I've got my next set of night shifts starting tonight. So I'm actually putting together a quick lunch right now. I'm just quickly heating up a um, Beyond Meat burger. So this is one of those vegan meaty burgers. This brand in particular really really does taste like meat. Uh, as you can see we bought them on offer because otherwise they are really expensive. I think vegan junk food or vegan fast food gets a bad reputation for being very processed and it's not vegan food that's processed, it's processed food that's processed regardless of the diet because that chicken or beef burger definitely doesn't look like the animal it came from anymore <laughs> there's been loads of steps along the way before that animal got onto the plate if you're going to compare something you want to compare like for like as hopefully i've shown you this week and will show you this week i don't tend to eat these replacements and processed foods very often i really love vegan food for what it is at its heart which is all the fruit and vegetables grains legumes nut nuts rices pastas, noodles, etc, etc, that I cook with and eat most of the week. All these replacement foods are very much a Western ideal of veganism that's been superimposed over a diet that's been around for years and years. It wasn't just invented on social media by influencers. No hate, they definitely influenced me to actually looking into veganism a lot more. In my own culture, in Indian culture, like I've hopefully shown you a bit this week, dishes like dal, Chana, Rajma, they are daily household dishes. They are so cheap, so nutritionally valuable and can make so many different dishes. Another misconception of veganism and that stops people trying it is the misconception that it's quite expensive. And yes, if you're buying this kind of stuff or the dairy-free magnums in my freezer, yes, those definitely do come at a premium. And as you can see, we definitely only really buy them when they're on offer because they are quite expensive. But this is by no means the majority of your diet. And I would very confidently say my grocery shops are a lot cheaper uh, on a vegan diet than they were before. So, um, I'm not sure where that came from, just felt like I could address quite a few issues with this burger. I've put some sweet potato fries that I've already seasoned into the oven. We only ended up using one yesterday and I still had one lying around, although didn't get to save this one entirely. A little bit of it had already gone mouldy. Rest in peace, little sweet potato. So I've supplemented that with some onion rings from the freezer as well. Just wanted to show you how ridiculously realistic this burger is. I think Beyond Meat is definitely the most realistic one I've cooked and tasted. It's it's almost offensive how meat-like it looks. <laughs> Alright, so ignore the appearance, but we've got a beautiful Beyond Meat burger with some spinach, uh, some cheese, some cucumber, and I found this um, smoky aioli thing from a HelloFresh meal in our fridge, so I've added that in there. It's delicious. Uh, we've got our beautiful onion rings buried under there are some sweet potato um, kind of disc things that I made. We've got some carrots we had left over, a little bit of salad and some hummus and some vegan aioli dip there so yep yeah, that is looking good. 
there's of course still room for dessert, so I have a piece of my beetroot brownie before descending into a long afternoon nap. Eventually I pull myself out of bed again to go out for some dinner and we have some Japanese food with some friends. I had some vegan gyoza, some lotus root chips and some tofu with rice. Just what I needed before my night shift. Post nights I fall straight into bed and wake up at some point in the afternoon confused, disorientated and of course hungry. What simpler comfort food than some good old pesto pasta. I love this free from pesto from Scala, it tastes just like the real thing. I pour it onto some garlic that I've lightly fried and of course add loads of spinach. Then I add the pasta and then some chopped sun-dried tomatoes for that extra punch of flavour and texture. I sprinkle on some dairy-free parmesan and pretty much inhale this whole meal. For dessert, I help myself to a mixed berry smoothie left in the fridge for me and some dark orange chocolate and settle down on the sofa in what will only end as another afternoon nap. When I do wake up, it's to make one of my favourite dishes ever, a beetroot coconut curry. I start with some coconut oil, adding cumin, mustard seeds and fenugreek seeds. When they've browned, I add some chilies, some curry leaves from our curry leaf plant in the balcony and some sesame seeds. Next, it's time to add the star of the show, some grated beetroot. For some reason, I seem to be adding all the beetroot available in the whole of Brisbane into this one curry, which was definitely too much. I would probably advise around four to 500 grams based on the spices I've used. I then added some turmeric, cumin and ground coriander and some salt and gave it all a nice stir. Then I covered it with a lid to let the beetroot cook. After about 10 minutes, I added the desiccated coconut, two tins of coconut milk, and some cashews I'd left to soak earlier. Then you stir it all in and it's done. It's one of my favorite things to cook because of how easy and how full of flavor it is. And I have it for dinner that night with some rice. My next night shift isn't too bad and I managed to catch a bit of sleep. So I only need a few hours when I get home and I wake up in the late morning craving the cereal of childhood dreams, some Cocoa Pops which is surprisingly vegan. Now, at this point in the week, we usually give up with cooking and order takeaway or eat out to get through the weekend, but we've got some friends coming for dinner again. So instead I'm making a shopping list and we're hitting the local farmer's market again to pick up the ingredients for our planned meals. For lunch, I reheat up yesterday's pesto pasta and then descend into a carb heavy nap. As you can see, when I'm on nights, all I do is eat, nap and repeat. For dinner, I attempt a vegan alternative to the absolutely classic chili paneer, but using tofu instead, and trust me, it did not disappoint. To make the paste, I mix together some cornstarch with some paprika, ginger, garlic, lemon juice, a little bit of soy sauce, a sprinkle of salt, a squeeze of tomato paste, and a little bit of water and mix it all up. In hindsight, it was probably a bit too thick and I would add less cornstarch, but I tried to revive this here with a bit of extra water. Next, I coat all the cubed tofu in this paste. As with most tofu dishes I cook, I try to get the firm dry tofu that doesn't require any prep and is the best at taking up flavor. After that, I fry some red chilies in oil and add even more garlic. What is up with those recipes asking for one clove? That is never enough. Then I add some sliced onions and some sliced red and green peppers. Next, I splash in some more soy sauce and add some more spices for flavor. I found some degi mirch in my cupboards, which just felt right. Finally, I give it a nice mix and let it cook for a few minutes before putting it to the side. Then it's time to cook our coated tofu. I just fry it in the pan, making sure all the sides are cooked equally. Then added the peppers and onions back in, gave it another stir and it's all done. Last but not least is a quinoa salad. This is way more cooking than I would do usually in one week, but all our dinner party plans fell in one week, so such is life. For this salad, I've so far cut some cucumber, some pomegranate, and these tiny little tomatoes that I found in the supermarket, which I thought was so cute. Then I make a little dressing with some lemon juice, oil, salt, and pepper, and give it a nice mix. And then it's literally as easy as adding the quinoa, which I've already boiled into a bowl, adding all the colorful fruits and vegetables in, giving it a nice mix, distributing the dressing very unevenly in my case, giving it another mix and then it's done. 
as you can see this was a pretty industrial quantity so this took care of lunch for the next few days as well and that was everything so that was yesterday's beetroot curry on the table an okra dish and a potato dish that vig made and then my chili tofu paneer which i garnished with coriander and some spring onion and as you can see i forgot to take out that huge salad so we had an obscene amount between the two of us for the next week but that wasn't such a bad thing thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed this video and got an insight into what some tasty vegan eating looks like see you next time and goodbye for now